Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about finance and the stock trading. First a little background for those of you who don't know me. My name is Brian Forrest. I bought my first stock in 1972, made money on it, used the proceeds to purchase an option uh, contract and promptly lost it all. Fifteen years ago I joined the ranks of the Bay Street crowd here in Toronto and became a stockbroker. A couple of years later I wrote the CFP exam and became a certified financial planner. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with this designation, a CFP is a financial jack of all trades, usually with a specialty in one or two particular areas. My specialties are investment portfolio design and estate planning. Okay, today we are going to talk about stock trading. Uh, to begin, I didn't want to get too technical by launching into a long and boring discourse on the fundamentals of corporate finance. What I did want to convey is a sense of what I've learned from dealing with people these many years and what makes a good or a bad investor. So, if you indulge in stock trading or other financial instruments, and there are many, sooner or later you are going to come to the realization that the study of the stock market is the study of human nature. All the fears, foibles, emotions, intelligence, and stupidity are all mixed up in the stew we call the stock market. So if you ask, do markets make any sense, you should ask, do people make any sense? Well, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Remember also that in this area we are dealing with money, people's money. Here's something else I've learned. People have strong opinions about money and they tend to have strong attachments to their own money. It's a peculiar. So if you've ever heard that markets tend to overreact, think about it. How do you tend to react to sudden gains or losses when it comes to money. This is a psychological phenomenon and if you understand it, if you can recognize fear, elation or panic, you can take advantage of it. Okay, now since I'm unfamiliar with your level of investment knowledge, I'm just going to quickly brush over the basics that everyone should know before you rush out and spend your hard-earned money on the latest stock tip. Here's the first tip, don't take stock tips. Remember that the purchase of a stock is basically the process of becoming a shareholder in a company. Decisions on which company to own are based on two broad categories, fundamental and technical. Fundamental analysis involves research on what the company does and how good it does it. The first is relatively easy to ascertain, sometimes. Bombardier, for instance, builds trains and planes. The second is somewhat problematic. Is Bombardier good at what they do? To answer this question, we have to look at their balance sheets and earnings statements. We have to examine a lot of financial ratios like debt to equity, return on equity, EBITDA, etc. We usually rely on the accountants to put all the numbers together and then we ask a chartered financial analyst, the CFA, to interpret the numbers. Once we've looked at the numbers, we need a basis for comparison. So we will also look at the numbers of all the companies in Bombardier's business. If Bombardier's profit was four cents per share, is this good or bad? On its own, it's uh, impossible to tell. You have to compare the earnings with their own history and with the earnings of its competitors to get a true sense of where they stand. Fundal, uh, fundamental analysis of large companies is difficult, complicated, and quite often even the analysts do get it wrong. Then we have the technicians. The stock market represents a variance of opinion. If the preponderance of opinion is positive on a certain stock, it will move up and vice versa. Technicians try to measure opinion and they try to predict opinion by watching and measuring how a stock trades. They scrutinize the ebb and flow of volume. They plot at what level a stock tends to turn up or down. They use charts and apply all types of measures to try and determine what to buy or sell and when to do it. Relative strength, stochastic, price by volume, moving averages, these are all the tools that a technician uses. He does not set too much stock in the fundamental analysis, citing the often witnessed observation that the fundamentals of a company can be superb, yet the stock will not rise. So. Technicians watch the market and fundamentalists watch the company. Which one is right, which one's wrong? Well, they're both right and they're both wrong. Many of you may remember the 1987 movie Wall Street with Charlie Sheen and uh, Michael Douglas. Douglas plays the part of Gordon Gekko, the corporate raider who believes greed is good. 
Gecko will not buy into a company unless he has information that no one else has. And there is the crux of the problem with fundamental analysis. You can never have enough information to be absolutely positive about anything. No matter how good things look, no matter how great the numbers are, there is always something waiting in left field that's going to blindside everyone. And the history of the stock market is full of stories about how great this or that stock was, only to see this or that stock fall from grace the next day. Nortel is a great example. At one time touted as the greatest company in Canada, with its stock rising to over $120 per share in 2000, only to fall to less than a dollar in 2002. Information is always incomplete, and looking backwards at past performance does not grant us the foreknowledge of things to come. No one predicted 9-11, but it affected every stock price in the world. The world runs on a finite supply of oil, and with dwindling supplies in the years to come, the price of oil is bound to rise sooner or later. This seems obvious. But what if some genius somewhere figures out cold fusion or some other alternate cheap and plentiful fuel source like hydrogen that can replace oil and gas overnight? What happens then? Sound far-fetched? Well, 50 years ago, practically everything we take for granted today would have sounded far-fetched. So no matter how much information we have, no matter how sound the analysts' research always allow for a margin of error, if everyone thinks something is great, well, everyone could be wrong. Still, in the end, when you invest in a stock, it's better to have some information than none. Try to understand the company you're getting involved in. As for technicians, here's the main problem, and it is similar to the problem that hedge funds have run into lately. Certain types of hedge funds can take advantage of temporary anomalies in the stock market. A stock can be trading in different markets for different currencies, for instance, and the price can stray momentarily the astute arbitrageur can take advantage of this by buying in one market while simultaneously selling in another. The problem is that if you know how, now have too many people with all the computer power in the world watching for this to happen, the opportunity ceases to exist. And this is the same problem that now exists for technical trading. Years ago, there were only so many people, mainly professionals, with access to the information and technical tools that would allow them to chart entry and exit points with some degree of accuracy. Well, now we have the internet, the great equalizer, and anyone can gain access to these tools and charting capabilities. And if everyone sees the same thing at the same time, the opportunity vanishes, or at least the charts start to mean something completely different. In the future, I'm going to delve into the specifics of what makes a great investment, and it involves both technical and fundamental aspects. But for today, I would like to limit my comments to this overall view of information and how people use it and react to it. I can't tell you how many times I've been called by someone who has just read an article in a newspaper or on the internet about how great this or that stock is, and let's buy some right away. We all tend to be swayed by whatever we've read lately, not realizing that somewhere else, in another newspaper, on another website, we will find an article that states just the opposite. And that is what the market is, an amalgamation of opinion. No matter how great you think a stock is, remember, there is always somebody willing to sell it to you. There is always someone on the other side of a trade whose opinion differs. And in this day and age where information and opinion are broadcast at the speed of light, people's convictions can change on a dime. Thus, the best investors are not swayed easily by the latest thing they've read or heard. They make up their own minds in due course, and then they do act. And on my next video, I'll go into the type of information that we should all act upon. Until then, good health and prosperity to all.